Hello everyone and welcome to my channel, and today I will be reading a face gel accessory by me. So let's get into it. The sterile smell of the hospital room fills your senses as you lie there, motionless. Everything feels distant, strange, as though you're floating just beyond the reality of it all. You turn your head, hearing the quiet hum of the machinery beside you. The soft click of footsteps outside the hallway. But the world remains dark, like an endless night that no amount of willpower can lift. You swallow, your throat tight. The mission had gone wrong, catastrophically so. It sensed something would happen in those final moments, and then it did. An intense burst of light, then a sudden overwhelming darkness that has not just gone since. Now, hours later, all you know is that you're lying in the hospital bed, unable to see a single thing. A knock sounds at the door, and before you can answer, you hear it slide open, and from the footsteps alone, you can pretty much guess who is coming in. They're light, but purposeful, like everything Facia does. You're awake, she says, her voice both warm and steady, carrying the quiet confidence she always brings. But there is something more in her tone, a gentleness you're not accustomed to hearing from her. Not that she was not gentle or soft with you, but she wouldn't be described as soft either. Pechelle, you murmur, forcing a small smile in her direction. You can't see her, but you imagine her standing there, her arms crossed, her gaze as sharp as ever. I... I didn't think they would call you. Of course they did. I heard about what happened. Did you really think I wouldn't come? She replied, her tone almost scolding, and you can hear just a little bit of hurt. You try to laugh, but it comes out weaker than you intended. Well, I didn't want you to see me like this. To be honest, I can't see anything much myself. Pechel moves closer and a quiet shuffle tells you she's pulling a chair beside your bed. You feel her presence settle next to you, the warmth of her hand reaching out to brush against yours, as if grounding you in a way that words cannot. Don't be ridiculous. I'm not going to leave you alone in this. She says firmly, as if that was an undeniable fact, and you can feel her fingers gently entwined with your ears. You let out a shaky breath, the weight of her words wrapping around you like a lifeline. But still, the thoughts in your mind linger, and so does the fear, tightening in your chest. I... I don't know if this is going to be permanent. The doctor said there was a chance it might never go away. I might never... Your voice breaks, and you bite down on your lip, swallowing back the panic rising within you. There is a beat of silence before she responds, her voice softening. Then I'll be with you. Whatever it is, Wyon, I will be with you. You didn't deserve this. Her words hang in the air, steady and unwavering. She's not one to offer any of your promises. And that knowledge is worth more than anything. And it brings a strange sense of comfort. Still, you can't help but feel the weight of what's happened pressing down on you. Together? You, you don't have to stay, Rachel. I don't want to become a burden. You already have a lot to deal with on your own. And I... I don't want to hold you back. Her fingers tighten around yours, and you can feel her lean in, 
her breath rushing against your cheek as she speaks. You think I'm going to let you push me away that easily? You think a little blindness is going to stop me from being here for you? You can't help but smile. A small, better laugh leaving you. A little blindness? You make it sound so insignificant. And she looks away, letting out a soft sigh. It should have been me. Don't say that. You immediately interrupt, frowning. Don't ever say that, Vaishal. You didn't do anything wrong either. You don't deserve this. I knew the risks and I... I did this out of my own accord. I'm old enough to know what I'm doing. And this is just what I got. And I'm happy. If I helped protect at least one person, then I'm happy it worked out. Even if this is what happened in the end. She kisses your palm and just squeezes your hand once more. You're strong, Wayan. Incredibly so. You're stronger than anyone else I know. I promise you, no matter what you think, I'm not going anywhere. I love you. Blind or not, it doesn't change a single thing for me. If you need to adapt, I'll be here, and I'll help you. You can trust me on that. She says, and a tear slips down your cheeks, unbidden, and you reach up to wipe it away only to find her hand there first, brushing it aside with a gentleness that catches you off guard. Her fingers linger for a moment, tracing the curve of your cheek. I don't know when I'll ever get used to this. Everything's so different, and it's terrifying. I know. And that's okay. You don't have to get used to it all at once. Just take it one step at a time, and I'll be here for every single one. And the reassurance that she gives you is more than enough, because you know, Vaishal means every single word. Thank you for everything. Don't thank me just yet. You'll have plenty of time. And we'll get through this. I promise. And as she sits with you, hand in yours, you realize that you will never have to face this darkness alone.